Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the Cauchy Riemann equations and the Wittenberg operators. Well, that if F is mapping of an open subset of the complex plane into C omega so C open is differentiable. If limit over complex valued A is going to zero F of z plus h minus f of z by by h exists at equal to f by above. Well, if I will different things, if you at the complex valued, right? So now what we're going to do is the public. So I can do two things actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose each the real value to the complex value, right? So it only exists. So suppose. is differentiable. Wait, see? Then, limit. As h goes to zero, this limit has to exist for the imaginary part of h equals zero, so h is purely real. So this limit is going to be, if it's differentiable, this limit is for any trajectory, so in particular this one will work, of f of what? f of z plus h minus f of z, all divided by h. Here h is a real number. This is the force of the limit. As h goes to zero, it's real, of f of x plus h plus i y minus f of x plus i y all divided by all divided by h now what's happening is the x is changing over here and the y is stationary so this is partial derivative so this is an partial f so this limit this will be equal to f sub x right this is f sub x and the point x y which is partial f, partial x, x, y, okay? So that's what the denominator is equal to. It's equal to this thing over here. This is f prime of z. Beautiful, okay? So f prime of z is partial f, partial s at both points over here. Now, if we write f, we write f as u plus i v, assuming that u and v are also differentiable functions, then what we can say is you can say that f x is what? We saw from a previous video how to define f sub x. It's just going to be u sub x plus i v sub x, which it tells me, of course, that f prime of z, in this case, is u x plus i v x. Great. That's a form of the derivative. Now, the beautiful thing is that I use one trajectory, letting the imaginary part of h be 0, because I know that it exists for every trajectory. I'll choose another trajectory. Now, I'm going to do the pulp. Also, f prime of z is equal to the limit as h rose to zero. The real part of h is equal to zero, right? Of f of d plus h minus f of z over z, over h rather. And now I can write this as the limit as h goes to zero, h real. You might say, wait a minute, why is h real in this case? I'm going to modify this, right? This says f of x plus i, y plus i, h. Now this i, h is purely imaginary. Minus f of x plus i, y, all divided by what? All divided by i times h. That's purely imaginary, right? So I know to replace h with i times h. And now that's great, because now for each real, it's purely imaginary, purely imaginary. And so now the x is fixed and the y is varying, right? So this is going to converge to what? It's going to exist. It can converge to 1 over i and then partial f, partial y at x, y, right? Which is going to be up 1 over i, 1 over i, and then u, y plus i, v, y. Okay. Now we get a quick expression over here. And now we get one call. Hence, Hence, ux plus ivx is going to be 1 over i uy, 1 over i uy, then uh, just plus vy, plus vy. Now, of course, 1 over i is negative i, so it's negative i uy plus vy. 
And that's a formula for the derivative as well. Great. So now what can I do? I can equate the real imaginary parts of these expressions over here. So this tells me what? This is going to tell me two things. The first thing it tells me is that ux is dy. So ux, partial u, partial x, is partial v, partial y. Then the i terms have to be equal. So vx is negative uy. So vx is negative uy. And these two partial differential equations are referred to as the cauchy riemann equations. So these are the cauchy riemann equations. Easy peasy. cauchy riemann equations. Beautiful. And then what we can do now is I can recast, typically what I do is I'll recast things in terms of z, z bar to sort of understand the connection between complex z and then the complex conjugate z, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find two operators. These are the worker operators. What's the first operator? It's partial, partial, z. And what is partial partial z? It's going to be a one half partial partial x minus i partial partial y. That's one Wertinger operator. And the other one, and partial partial z bar is going to be one half, one half what? Partial partial x plus i partial partial y. Those are my Wernger operators. And now I claim the cauchy riemann equation. So f prime exists. I claim to proposition prop. f prime of z exists if and only if, if and only if df dz bar is equal to zero. Okay. So let's prove that. So if f prime exists, what can I say? f prime exists implies that f of what? So f prime, f prime of z is equal to what? Is equal to, well, it's equal to two things. It's equal to fx, so fx. And that fx is equal to what? Is equal to this negative i, negative i, fy, because 1 over i is negative i. So what does this say? So these two things are equal to each other. So this implies what? This implies that fx plus i f y is equal to zero, okay? But look at this differential operator. There's an x derivative plus i a y derivative, right? So this expression over here is the same thing as saying this implies that 2 df dz bar is equal to zero, which is equivalent to what? Which is equivalent to saying that df dz bar is equal to zero, right? So all these are if and only ifs, right? So all those expressions are if and only if. So in other words, the derivative exists when the when the z bar derivative of this Wernger operator is equal to zero. So we're going to see later, actually, and you, you can usually check, of course, that when you sort of do these operators sequentially, what you're going to get is if you do four times, if you do two times this, you get this, and two times this. These things are basically what you have when you, when you factor the Laplacian, right? So in other words, what you can easily see is you can see d squared dx squared plus d squared dy squared is really what? Is really partial x minus i partial y, and then partial x plus i partial y, right? So this Wertinger operator is intimately related with a factorization of the Laplacian, right? So that gives us a real hint as to how these complex valued functions are appearing as solutions to the Laplace equation. So in other words, the real and imaginary parts, we're going to extract more information in further videos on this, well, we're going to see the real and imaginary parts actually satisfy the Laplace equation. So the real and imaginary parts of an analytic function or a holomorphic function are harmonic functions. So there's a, that's how we bridge the gap between complex valued function theory and harmonic analysis, right? So that's the marriage point of these two theories is the fact that when I factor the Laplace equation, I can factor the Laplace equation to Wertinger operators, and one of them being equal to zero corresponds to, corresponds to either holomorphic functions or anti-holomorphic functions. And we're really going to explain that difference in further videos. Thank you very much.